there's one of those sayings around, you know, the the um the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice and and people, organizations, states, systems, they ultimately, particularly as ideas of justice and um and the will of the people becomes more and more powerful, and you move towards spaces where justice is more broadly accessible uh, or, or more broadly visible issues of injustice are more broadly visible becomes more imperative for um, military organizations to sculpt a story. And if there's one thing I've seen, particularly in relation to the doctrine of discovery is that is the power of stories. And you know, we come from a long history. I see our sister Tawera is online here of, of how we have had to really push our way. And you know, I actually met Julian at the UN as well, the UN Oceans Conference. And um, you know, I have to meet you to you, Julian, because you created a space for Tafana Raihania and I to tell our story so that we could pre present our, our petition against Statoil uh, for prospecting along our coastline that was a powerful story and it's through the powers of these stories when we own our stories and we own our narratives and we carve our stories that we continue to keep those stories alive even for these multi and intergenerational struggles as well we have to keep the flame of those stories alive we have to take ownership of it and yeah absolutely one of the things that really concerns me is the way in which these organizations uh, try to take and reframe the story. And Totoko, what Kyle was just saying, if it's not greenwashing though, it's also brownwashing where they try to indigenize themselves as well. And they will try to position, you know, the naming of naval ships after our own tipuna, the naming of naval projects after our atua. And so they will wear whatever cloak and the doctrine of discovery has always worn whatever cloak is the most facilitative and powerful cloak for it to achieve its ends. But we can take that cloak off them and we have to have real full frank discussions around what our role and around what our position is in this whole story, we need to geolocate ourselves as, as indigenous mokopuno of Te Moana Nui Akiwa, um, as well as being within a nation that presents itself as being pacifist, that presents itself as being kind, that presents itself as being progressive and green, and use our voices and raise our voices to challenge those fictions, particularly when we're participating in really harmful activities like RIMPAC, you know, because sometimes at the end of the day, all you've actually got is your voice and your truth and your story, and, and if that's all you've got to do is all you can do is to raise it and tell your truth then it's that's our responsibility we we have to do that so um i guess that would be you know my contribution to that we can't let them take our indigeneity you know they can do whatever they're going to do but they're not going to call themselves indigenous while they do it because they are they're, they're being classic you know the the imperial the vanguard of imperialism always has been the military from the days of the explorers, it was armed military vessels that went out to facilitate and apply and implement the doctrine of discovery. And at the end of the day, the only thing standing between us and self-determination, if I wanted to go out there right now and live my indigenous truth as a mama on my own land, just living by my indigenous laws of my tipuna, the final straw that would be enacted upon me would be military might. So that is really the, the one thing that stands between us and our indigenous rights. So we always have to remember that and not allow them to cloak themselves with our indigeneity because that is what really belongs to us. Tēnā koutou.